Yeah, in this uh, video, we're going to see in section three uh, of uh, chapter 20 of the book of uh, Randy Knight. It has to do with uh, Coulomb's Law. Well, Coulomb's Law is um, a rule that tells you how one charge interacts with another charge by means of forces. They interact by exerting forces on each other. And um, uh, it was um, Charles Coulomb that um, first investigated this, these properties. And he found that all the forces are aligned along the line joining the two charges. And those forces are, are either attractive or repulsive between the, the forces. And the magnitude of the force is uh, proportional to the product of these two charges, but uh, also is inversely proportional to the square of this distance. It is uh, something like this, where this means uh, proportional. So F, the force is proportional to this product. But of course, if we look at um, the magnitude, uh, the units of uh, the force uh, is going to be in newtons, whereas the units, the units here are going to be the units of charge to the second power, whatever they are, divided by the units of uh, distance, which are meters to the second power. So somehow we need to go from uh, units of charge to the second power divided by meters squared to, uh, to newtons. So um, there, uh, need, there's something needed in between. Well, it turns out that the charges are were eventually measured in some uh, units, arbitrary units, that uh, we know as coulombs. And the constant of proportionality is known as uh, the, by the letter K. And the force, turns out that the force of one charge on the second one is, has the same magnitude as the force of the second charge on the first one. And it's going to be given by this, not taking into account the sign of the charges, but by using absolute value. And we'll explain that um, later on. Uh, and the constant of proportionality is given by this number, which uh, this can be run, rounded off to 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons meter squared divided by coulomb squared, where coulomb is now the, um, the unit of, of charge of uh, the, the unit of the charges. And of course, the direction is always along the, the line joining the two particles. And but um, it, it could be one direction or the opposite, depending on where they are attractive or repulsive. And later on, um, we're going to represent this by the following ratio is one over four pi epsilon zero, where epsilon zero is the so-called permittivity of free space. This will allow us to calculate sim similar problems in different media. Like for instance, this one is valid in free space or in air. Whereas if we were to have the two charges embedded in, in, in water, then uh, the number of this would be different and it would be a different uh, value of uh, the permittivity. We, instead of the permittivity of free space, we would be using a different number. In summary, for though we, we have two positive charges, the forces are going to be pulled away. We will be separating the charges. If we have two uh, uh, equal charges here, uh, in this case negative, then they will be repelling each other. But if we have positive and negative charges, they will be attracting to each other. The direction is always uh, the, the extra complication because we can we have to be able to represent this in some some way. And um, the easiest case is uh, that of two charges that are over the horizontal. And in that case, the force is calculated this way. We're using, instead of k, we're using 1 over 4 pi to 0, which is the same. And uh, this distance r is going to be this distance r. And q1 is this the magnitude of this charge. q2 is the magnitude of this other charge. And if the, in this case, we would have a positive and negative um, charge. So they would be attracting, attracting to each other. This force is the force felt by charge one, but produced by charge two. In other words, it is because charge two is here that charge one feels this force towards it. And on the other side, 
Uh, this force is the one that is felt by charge two, but produced by charge one, and it points in this direction. Both of them are of the same magnitude, but they are opposite in direction. In this case, again, this one is of the same magnitude as this one, but they are both opposite in direction, but repelling to each other the same as in this other case. So it is because of um, we need to define the direction by inspecting the diagram that we do not use signs here. We tend to use, um, for instance, in this case, we would say that the force is, is uh, on the direction of positive x because it is to the right uh, on the horizontal line. In this case, it would be to the left on the horizontal line. So the force would be on the minus x direction. So this would be connected to a plus and this would be connected to a minus, which um, it has nothing to do with this minus, but it has to do with the fact that it is the force is pushing to the left. Like for instance, in this case, we have a force pointing to the left, so it would be um, in the minus x direction, whereas in this case, it would be the same force, but pointing to the right, so it would be a plus uh, sign. And in, uh, as you can see, this force is exactly the same as this force, but one is pointing to the right, which is positive, the other one to the left, which is negative. Let's calculate one problem uh, in detail. In this case, we're going to have a Q1 e equals to 25 nanocoulombs, nano being 10 times 10 to the negative 9. And Q2 is negative, as we can see there, is negative 75 nanocoulombs. And they are separated by distance r equal to 3 centimeters. Uh, question A, find the magnitude and direction of the electric force that this one exerts on this one and B, the force that this one exerts on this one. Well, the first one, this one is going to be exerted in force on this one, but this one will feel attraction to the negative, to a positive charge, so the, the force is going to be pointing to the left. For the second question, uh, this one is going to be feeling a force produced by this one, but it's attractive, so the force is going to be pointing to the right. And in both cases, it's going to be K, Q1, Q2, divided by the distance to the second power, except that the distance has to be put in uh, meters. So here we have it. It's just Q1, Q2 divided by the distance of 7 power times the constant, which is 9 times 10 to the 9. So we bring the numbers, 25 nanocoulombs, 75 nanocoulombs. Look at the fact that we are getting rid of the minus sign because we're using the absolute value. So um, with that, we find that uh, that force is going to be 0 0.019 newtons. And again, it's uh, the force that felt by Q2, so it's going to be pointing to the left. So if we wanted to represent, to describe the direction, we would have to say, oh, the force is this, pointing in the negative x direction. For the other case, uh, so that would be the one that we just calculated for the other case. It would be exactly the same, except that it, it, representing the forces as vectors, and this is why we use the little arrow on top, one is going to be the opposite of the other one, which means that one is pointing to the opposite direction of the other one. But the magnitude is the same. This is the, the one without the arrow means the magnitude, the F without the arrow. If you want to see more simple calculations uh, using this, this uh, equation, you can look at um, these video examples of the I lecture online. And uh, I believe they have uh, eight of uh, electrostatic uh, problems. This is uh, one step uh, more complex than the previous one because it, it involves three charges. So we have uh, 10 nanocoulombs here, uh, 10 nanocoulombs there, both of them are positive. They are separated uh, from this third charge, one centimeter and another centimeter. And the question is, what is the net force on this one here, midway? Well, it is easy to see that uh, the force is going to be zero because this one repels this one, producing a force of this in this direction. Whereas this one repels the little charge, also pushing it, but now to the left. Since 
th this charge is the same as this charge, the and this distance is the same as this distance, one centimeter. Both forces are going to be equal to each other and in opposite directions, so the net force is going to be zero. But um, let us calculate it. So let us calculate this one here is going to be one nanocoulomb times ten nanocoulomb, so it's one nanocoulomb times ten nanocoulomb times k divided by this distance, which is one centimeter, except that we have to put it in meters, so it's 0 0.01 meters to the second power. We uh, obtain the product of all of this, and we, we get 9 times 10 to the negative 9 uh, newtons, and in this case it would be pointing to the right. Whereas the other one is uh, exactly the opposite, but pointing to the left, so the net force is going to be zero. Now, the, um, the next question is, uh, what if this charge on the right is uh, replaced instead of having a plus 10 nanocoulombs, this becomes a minus 10 nanocoulombs? Well, in that case, this one would produce this force in that direction, but this one being negative would attract this one. So instead of this force pointing to the left, it would be pointing to the right. And these two would add up, giving a, tw a force twice as big. So you have this added to that, giving you a force twice as big. So it's going to be twice this number to the right. This is a kind of a similar problem. We have um, two point charges are located on the, there would be Q1 here. Uh, I mean, Q1 here, and there would be Q2 there. But then we want to know what are the forces that these two exert on Q3 here. And the magnitudes are there, the distances are here. So we have to calculate uh, two forces and add them up. The force that this one exerts on th this one, and the force that this one exerts on that one. Q1 exerts a force on Q3, but it's uh, repulsive, so that force is going to be pushing, pointing to the left. But Q2, which is larger, but farther away, is going to be producing an attractive force on Q3, so that force is going to be pointing to the right. So we're going to have 1 to the right minus 1 to the left, and whichever is uh, larger will be uh, dominating. So the first one is like this. That would be the repulsive force that Q1 exerts on Q3. That would be the attractive force that Q2 exerts on Q3. And it's just a matter of calculating both forces. It's going to be K, this is your K, 9 times 10 to the 9. Q1, Q3 for this force, this one is, this force is here, Q1, Q3, divided by the distance, which is 4 centimeters, or 0 0.04 meters. And that would be this one here. Um, Q2, um, I mean, Q, no, that for, for the 1, 3 is going to be 2 centimeters, sorry. So 0 0.02. So doing all this product, we get this number, which is 112 uh, micro newtons, negative six micro. Now the other force, the one that is attractive, is going to be Q1, Q2 divided by two centimeters. Um, sorry, it's going to be Q3, Q2 divided by four centimeters to the second power. So it's Q2, Q3 divided by 4 centimeters to the second power. Doing the product, you get 84 micro newtons. So we have uh, 112 pointing this way, 84 pointing this way. We do the subtraction and we get negative 28. So the addition of these two forces will result in a force that is 28 micro newtons of magnitude pointing to the left. In class, I would ask you to answer these questions using um, your um, clicker device. But here I ask you to read it. I may I pause, pause your um, device, answer it, and then continue to see the answer. Uh, we have these two spheres, but this one has twice the charge as this one. Which vector here uh, represent the force that two exerts on one. They are giving us, for comparison, they're giving us the force that one exerts on two. So 
out of these four, which one would represent the, the force that two exerts on one. So please make a pause and think and answer. Well, turns out that um, the force here is going to be exactly the same as the force that, except that it's going to be in the opposite direction. So we need to look at one that is of the same length pointing in the opposite direction. So it's this one here. Answer is C. This is a similar case. Uh, in this case, we are given this force, but now we are asked, what is the vector, which, which of these four answers represents the vector that uh, the force that one would exert on two if we reduce this distance to one half? In other, words, in other words, if we push this charge to this point, what would happen to the force? So, pause, think, and answer. Well, by dividing the distance in two, um, we're going to be dividing the force by, not by r squared, but by r over two squared, which is r over r squared over four. The four comes up into the numerator and it, it multiplies this by four. This one is twice as big as this one, so this is not the answer. It has to be four times, so it's going to be twice as big as this one. It would be something like that. So the answer is none of the above, because this one was not listed. Now we have three cases here, and uh, the question is, which of these three represents um, the, uh, the, there are three right-hand charges? In which of these three cases the, the right-hand charge feels the largest force? Well, again, Think, pause, think, and answer. Well, I'm uh, giving you a little bit of help here. Uh, we can see that the force that this one feels is going to be KQQ Q divided by R squared. In this case, since we're uh, doubling the, um, the charge and the distance, it's going to be Q2Q divided by this to the second power, which is 4 r squared. So dividing 1 here by by 2, we get a 1 and we get a 2. So this force would be 1 half of this force. So this, this is not the strongest. In this case, we have 4 times the charge and twice the distance. So it's going to be 4q divided by this to the second power, which is a 4. So this one cancels that one. And this force ends up being exactly of the same magnitude as this one. So q and 4q are tied. That would be the answer. This is a similar problem, except that now we imagine that this is a small positive charge, and the question is which of those four is the largest? So I will not uh, go in detail. I'll just ask you to pause, think, and answer. Here we have uh, four cases in which this, you can think of this as small positive charge, and the question is, in which of these four cases the small positive charge feels the largest force? Pause, think, and answer. Well, here we, we see that this one attracts uh, the positive charge, so it produces a force to the right. This one repels the positive uh, charge being at the same distance uh, from between the, um, these two charges and being of the same magnitude but opposite to this one, then it would feel it would produce uh, the same type of force. So these two would add up to give you twice something twice as big. In this case, we have uh, this is uh, this is attractive, so it's going to be producing something this way of the same magnitude as before but opposite. And this one would be producing something repulsive, except that it's farther away. So consequently, the um, distance is going to be one quarter. Uh, I mean, the distance is twice as big as the, pre the previous force. So the magnitude of the force is going to be one quarter of the size of this one. So this will be smaller than this, which is equal to twice that. The same here. And um, 
And here is going to be zero because the, the two forces equal each other in opposite directions. Uh, again, a similar problem. The direction of the force on the negative Q charge here is up, down, left, right. Well, it's obvious that it's going to be along this direction. So think, I mean, pause, think, and answer. Well, there's going to be a repulsive force between these two, and that's uh, something uh, uh, to the right. And this one is going to be producing a, um, an attractive force, but it's farther away, so this one is going to be slightly smaller than that one, which means that the sum of the two will give you a small force to the right. So it's to the right. Well, we're going to learn, um, we're going to need to uh, know how to decompose a vector. Turns out that um, whenever we have a force in this direction, to get um, if you want to add this force to another force, we have to break it into components. This force is equivalent to having these two forces: one pushing along the x-axis, one pushing along the y-axis. So instead of uh, dealing with this one at an angle, we deal with these two in their uh, respective directions. So to do that uh, decomposition, we have to uh, remember the um, trig functions. If we have a right triangle, which means a, a, a triangle that has a 90 degree angle here, we can um, label the three sides as the adjacent side. This would be the adjacent to, uh, imagine that we want to deal with this angle alpha. Uh, the the uh, the side that is opposite to the 90 degrees is always the largest, and it is the hypotenuse. And if we are dealing with this angle, this would be adjacent to the uh, angle, so this would be the adjacent side. And this is going to be the opposite to the angle, so it's the opposite side. And the relationship between this length, which is A, and this length, which is O, and this length, which is H, is as follows. It can be, they can be related by means of the cosine. So H times the cosine of this angle would give you A. And then H times the sine of this angle would give you O, like we have here. Or if we're dealing with the other angle, then this would become um, the angle in question and, and everything gets reversed. H times sine of this will give you O. Uh, H times cosine of B would give you O, like, like in here. And H times uh, sine of B would give you A, like here. And uh, finally, this one, this side, divided by this side, would give you the uh, tangent of this angle. And of course, this one squared plus this one squared gives you that one squared, which is uh, Pythagoras' theorem. Now, to represent forces along the x-axis, we use uh, a number and then we multiply this imaginary vector of magnitude 1. For instance, if we say that the force is 3 newtons this way, we say, oh, it's going to be 3i. i being a unit vector, unit arrow that is pointing in the right direction. If, if, we have, if this happens to be, say, 4 newtons up, then it's going to be 4 times j, j being a unit vector magnitude 1, pointing in the upward direction. In that case, F would be represented as this force, this vector here, and this other force, this other vector there, like this. And um, this one can be represented as uh, F, the magnitude times cosine of the angle in the I direction. And this one is going to be F, which is this length, times sine of this angle that will give you the opposite, which is the, this length times j, pointing in the up, upward di direction. Well, related to that, imagine that we have these four charges here. And the question is, these three charges exert a force on this charge. The question is, what is the direction of that force? Let me guide you a little bit before I ask you to pause and think. Uh, this one will be producing a repulsive force on this one, pointing down. 
This one will be producing a repulsive force on, on uh, this one, pointing away this way. This one will be producing a repulsive force on this one. It's farther away, but at the same time, is twice as large as these other charges. This one, by the way, is this, uh, of the same magnitude as this one and of this one. So this one, which is larger and further away, will be producing one along this line, but it's repulsive, so it's going to be pointing in this direction. So we have to add these three forces. What is going to be the direction of, uh, of, of the sum of those forces? And the answers are A, B, C, D, or none of these, E. So now, pause, think, and answer. Oops, I didn't give you much time. Um, this is uh, the answer. The answer is uh, that these two will give you uh, something in the same direction as um, the force produced by this charge. So everything will be added and will end up coming uh, here at 45 degrees. You can think of this as having ropes pulling something in this direction and in this direction. Of course, that something is going to move here at an angle instead of going either to the left or down is going to be coming to the left and down at 45 degrees. Similar question, which is the direction of the net force of the charge at the top? We have three charges, those three, and the question, this one feels a force produced by these two, but is this force going to be in the A direction, B direction, C direction, or D direction? Or none of these? So pause, think, and answer. Well, the answer is D, because this one produces a force, uh, a repulsive force, so it pushes it away in this direction. This one is an attractive, produces an attractive force in this direction. So now we have to add this one to that one but they are exactly of the same magnitude because this, these two are of the same magnitude and this distance is the same as that distance. So this force is of the same magnitude as this force. So by adding them, we get something exactly flat on the horizontal. So the answer is D. This is a numerical problem and we have um, charge Q1 here, charge Q2 there, and charge Q3 here. The question is, what is the force on Q2 produced by Q1 and Q3? Well, we can see that uh, there's, there's going to be two pairs of, um, uh, uh, two forces produced by the different pairs of charges. We're interested on the, only on the charge, on the force on, on Q2. So Q1 will exert a force on Q2, attractive because they are of opposite signs and it's going to be pointing in this direction towards Q1. Now Q3 produces a, a, another attractive force on Q2 but it's going to be pointing down. So what we have to do is calculate this force, calculate that force and then add them up. And to add them up we're going to have to break this force into components, one component down, one component to the left. This would be one of the first uh, force. This is the other one. But this one is at an angle, so it has to be decomposed into components. And like so. So it is replaced by the red arrows now. And the, the red arrow down gets added to the F23, whereas the F21 is only the vertical com uh, horizontal component of the F21. So what we have to do is calculate uh, the forces and the components. Oh, here we go. The F23 is relatively simple because everything happens in a straight line. So it's just Q2, Q3 divided by the distance to the second power and the distance was uh, 0.5. So multiplying everything, we get uh, 4.32 milli newtons times 10 to the negative 3. So it's milli. Now the other one, the F21, is kind of similar, but we have to find what is the direction, what is the length between the two charges. So we know that um, uh, we know this, this distance, we know this distance. So by um, 
Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate this distance. Here it is, it's 1.3. So this force is going to be Q1, uh, Q2, divided by this distance to the second power times K. So it's going to be Q1, Q2, divided by the 1.3 meters to the second power times K. So uh, the product gives you 3.83 millinewtons. Now, this one is still at an angle. So now we need to multiply times the cos of this angle to get this one and times the, the sine of this angle to get this one, which is equivalent to this one. So here we go. The component is this force, but it's now times the sine of the angle. Now the sine of the angle, we have this, this triangle here, which is the same as this triangle here. This angle here is the same as this angle down here. The sine of this is going to be this distance, this distance divided by the hypotenuse. So it's 1.2 divided by 1.3. There it is. And the, the cos of uh, is going to be 0 0.5 divided by 1.3. So uh, that way we obtain is this 3.83 is here and here. We use the negative sign because it's pointing to the left in X. We use the negative sign because it's pointing down in Y. And now we have to add this one to that one. And they, this one is here, also negative. This one is here, negative. So we have down is going to be this magnitude. To the left is going to be this magnitude. If we want the um, magnitude of the whole force, we use uh, Pythagoras theorem again. I square this one, I square that one, add them up and take the square root, and we get uh, that. This would give us the direction, the angular direction by the tangent of, of that angle. A similar uh, problem, we have um, three charges. Q1, Q2, and Q3. What is the net force on Q3 that are, are excited by the other two? Well, this one, this, this is attractive, so it's going to be a force pointing that way. This one is repulsive, so it's going to be a force pointing down. And um, the Q1, Q3, this one here is going to be given by that. It's 50, 30 divided by this length. And for the, uh, that length, it has to be calculated because uh, uh, by, by knowing this and knowing this and using Pythagoras theorem. So we get 0 .7, 0.07 centimeters. So we can calculate that f the magnitude of that force and it turns out to be 2.7 millinewtons in that direction. But um, the other one is going to be exactly the same because uh, this is the same number as that and this distance is the same distance as that. So except that this one is going to be pointing away. So it's going to be down. So it is like that. This would be the 1, 3. This would be the 2, 3. And now we have to break them into components and add them up. It is easy to see that this one is going to be broken into an upward arrow and a left pointing arrow, whereas this one is going to be a downward arrow and a left arrow. Well, the up pointing arrow and the down pointing arrow will be of the same magnitude but opposite direction, so they cancel. There will be no force along the y direction. So the net force is going to be to the left, is going to be twice the component of this force, the horizontal component of this force. So we have to is to calculate the X component, which is calculated here. We know that this is this force is 2.7 times 10 to the negative 3, and this angle is 45. So we multiply this times the cosine of 45, we get this, which is that. So the net force is going to be twice this, whereas the, the vertical component is 0. So they add up like that. And we get this plus that gives you this. And we use the negative signs to denote the fact that it's pointing to the left.
And that is the answer. This is another example, straight from the book, problem um, 20.5. We have a glass, a, a plastic sphere, which is very light, and it has some charge, 10 nanocoulombs, and it is, um, uh, uh, oh no, this is the plastic uh, sphere, uh, has a charge of negative 10 nanocoulombs, and it is on top of a glass bead that is on a table. This glass bead has a charge of uh, 10 nanocoulombs. But um, the, um, the bead has a mass of uh, 15 milligrams. This one has a mass of 10, of 10 uh, 15 milligrams. And the question is, uh, will it move up or not? It is resting on the table. But this plastic here is fixed and it will be, of course, being negative and this being positive will be attracting it. The question is, will it uh, move up because of the attraction or stay down? And uh, translating the question is, uh, it amounts to calculating where the electrostatic force is larger than its weight. If the weight is larger, then the glass bead will stay uh, on the table. But if the electrostatic force is larger than its weight, then it will move up. So it's just a matter of calculating both the weight and this force. Well, the force is uh, the same as before, k, q1, q2 divided by the distance to second power, and the distance is one centimeter. So we calculate all of that. Uh, this, would, would be, this would be 10, this would be 10, this would be 9 uh, in nanocoulombs, of course. And gives you this amount for the, the force. Now the weight is just mass times gravity. So it is uh, the 15 milligrams times gravity, which is 10, basically 9.8. So we get um, this uh, many newtons uh, pushing it down. And since these are way less than this, it's um, the, the glass bead is bound to fly away from the table. So the glass bead will leap upward. A few more questions. Uh, charges one and two exert repulsive forces on each other. Uh, this charge is four times this charge, uh, which statement is true? The, is the force one on two larger than the force of two of one, is the, or smaller or equal? Well, actually it is equal. All the, um, all the forces, all the Coulomb forces are equal on both charges as we have seen before. This is the end of uh, section three. And um, this is uh, the homework that I am assigning. Uh, problem 9, problem 15, problem 47, 49, 53. And uh, all of them are very similar to the ones that we solved in this video. And this is the end of uh, section 20.3.